My name is Neil Thompson. I'm the author of Light This Candle, The Life and Times of Alan Shepard, which is the first biography of the first American in space. This is not just a book about space, but a, a book about this large and largely overlooked life, this guy who just lived life on her, his terms. Shepard was the military version of what Elvis was to music, what James Dean was to Hollywood, what Kerouac was to literature. Today, today's man was once a boy who wanted to be Alan Shepard. He was uh, a little boy of the Lindbergh generation who grew up wanting nothing more than to fly airplanes. That was his, his life's mission. You know, he was the smart kid in class. He was the athlete in high school. He was the smart guy, the popular guy. He was a little bit mysterious, friends told me, from, from high school. He kind of stuck to himself a little bit. But, um, you know, he, he was the stud on campus. When he gets here, everybody's a stud. Um, and so he was up against all these, all these uh, young men, it was only men at the time, um, who, who also aspired to be Charles Lindbergh. Shepard was probably 5'9 or 5'10 at the time, 155 pounds, and everybody said, you're crazy to try and go out for the crew. You're never going to make it against these big guys. But he worked hard, and, and you know, he would get up a little earlier, the, earlier than the other guys and run a little bit longer and work out in the gym a little bit longer and just willed himself to become uh, a varsity rower, and he, and he did it. So I think, I think the lesson he learned here is that he's, he's not going to be able to coast through life. He's, he's not perfect at everything he does. There are times he's going to have to really work at it and, um, and, and practice and strive for perfection instead of just relying on his considerable talents. They were considerable enough, but, he, but he, that wasn't enough. And, and I think he learned those, those lessons here first he couldn't help but indulge his dark side. His antics would take him to the brink of a premature end to his career. Passing over the tennis courts, the roar of his engines scared the breath out of hundreds of uniformed men standing at attention below. Thinking a jet was about to crash onto their heads, sailors and officers dove to the ground, and hundreds of white hats were swept into the air by Shepard's, the wake of Shepard's jet. The commanding officer of the base jumped to his feet and screamed, get that pilot's name. I want to know where he's from, and I want him grounded. A lot of us would have lost our wings for something like that, Davidson said. But he had a way of getting away with it. Once again, Shepard had a couple of guardian angels looking out for him. Shepard, who was known for his uh, impatience and, and impetuousness, uh, uh, finally barked uh, through his headset, I'm cooler than you are. Why don't you fix your little problem and light this candle? Um, so that's how we got the title of the book. It kind of sums up who Shepard was. It's very driven, competitive, uh, impetuous, and, and uh, and sort of smart, smart alecky guy. Uh, I'd argue that Shepard was probably the most flamboyant and, and accomplished and, and enigmatic and charismatic of them all. Sailed aboard Navy ships to all corners of the globe, flew jets at supersonic speeds and superhuman heights, drove Corvettes, rocketed to space, and golfed on the moon, Argu arguably one of the most eloquently traveled men alive. Where does an edgy, competitive explorer go after he's already gone where few men have? How does someone reach the moon, and how does he survive after he's gone there? He had kind of trained everybody around him to protect his privacy, not to tell too many details to, to uh, um, aspiring biographers or journalists. We've been to the moon. People watch the space shuttle go up, and it doesn't really do anything that really grabs them. They pay a little bit of attention and, and praise the heroes when something tragic happens, like with Challenger and Columbia. But other than that, um, I don't know who the heroes of today are. You know, we're so saturated by, by uh, sports heroes and celebrities, and, and um, it, that's what, where people's values are, not necessarily on people who do the things that these guys continue to do today. My next book is going to be about moonshine and the creation of NASCAR, so it has nothing to do with space. <laughs> A little bit with speed and crazy guys who, who uh, are speed freaks and, and uh, adventurers, but not.